those of us who work in machine learning and artificial intelligence, we, we would like to pamper the machines and computers as babies. So seeing, as we say, is a, is a constituent part of the total gamut of understanding. You being able to do this is a direct corollary of the machine being able to understand. Hello everyone, start of the new year. And uh, personally, I feel no better time uh, to talk about something interesting. Anyway, I mean, if you morning shows the day, right? So if we if we start the year with some interesting topics to talk about uh, in our research endeavors or in our mathematical quests, I believe I believe it's going to be a beautiful year to look forward to and something exciting that we can actually work throughout the year. So uh, today I'd be sharing uh, some ideas to probably get you interested about one of the topics uh, that have been uh, actively worked worked upon at, at Chinta Research Endeavors. Um, we have had uh, multiple students uh, working on computer vision uh, in, in, in Chinta and we have been tackling a wide gamut of problems in computer vision and uh, that is what I'm here to talk to you guys about today and um, hopefully it's going to be a fun discussion. Um, as we know, uh, the gift of vision is one to be thankful to Almighty for always, right? Because um, at some point of time, I mean, the amount of things that we are able to do with the gift of vision to be able to appreciate something that's um, a beautiful scenery uh, of mountains and rivers or be it just a movie. And I mean, obviously, it's not... And, it is ju just at that point of time that you understand that it's not really just about seeing things, but more about understanding what those things are. And that is where artificial intelligence comes in. When you really, have you ever thought of the fact that what if a computer or, or what if actually a machine could see things? Now, seeing things doesn't really mean that you, I mean, for example, as I talk to you, I see in front of me a camera. Right. So it's not only about the fact that I see the camera recording this video, but I understand that while I record this video, my message gets conveyed to you. Right. So there is that entire contextual understanding where seeing forms one of the constituent parts. So seeing, as we say, is a, is a constituent part of the total gamut of understanding. And that is where the brain also comes in, right? I mean, we know how um, vision picks up uh, the events that is happening in front of us or whatever we are trying to perceive and it sends us those signals to the brain which is then picked up by the occipital lobe and then you understand and infer those events, right? So when you're seeing a cat, when you're seeing a cat, Probably the first time you're seeing a cat, as, as I mean, you probably walk out of your home, you see a fluffy little animal in white walking around, likes to uh, sip around a little bit of milk and you probably don't know what it's called. And then you actually come home and you possibly tell your mom that, okay, I, I saw this really fluffy little white animal and it has got these whiskers and it got startled when it saw me. And then your mom tells you, like, okay, these are the kinds of animals that you call cats. And that is your point of learning. So... And that complete experience is what you call seeing, right? So that is what we, those of us who work in machine learning and artificial intelligence, we, we would like to pamper the machines and computers as babies, right? We really would want them to understand and to learn, right? When we say learn, it has the same amount of experience. Whenever we are, let's say, studying for our exams, we are given some data to first learn and then we are tested on the stuff that we were able to pick up. Very similarly, computers also, as you know, for those of you who have had some experience into the domain of machine learning and artificial intelligence, you know that we have two definite phases, the training phase and the testing phase or the validation phase, right? So uh, similarly, talking about computer vision, what all stuff uh, can you do with computer vision? What is computer vision all about? So indeed, computer vision is about somehow enabling machines to see and when we see we mean that extended understanding of seeing we mean contextual understanding right so for example you could have uh, a computer watch a sports uh, video right a series of sports videos and they tell you for real what sports is going on, right? For example, you have a cricket video going on in front of you or you have a football video going in front of you or you have a tennis video being played out in front of you and you have a mid machine or you have a model that has the capability to 
to tell you that okay this is a tennis match being played between this and this player and this was probably uh, being uh, aired on London at so and so time and all of this information or it's being able to tell you that no this is a match between Manchester United and Manchester City uh, being played uh, at the Old Trafford and so and so date right so if you want to be able to do that think to pause the video and think for a while what would be the necessary pieces of information that you would require if you would want to understand uh, if it's a football video or if it's a tennis video or if it's a cricket video for us humans it's that very easy but was it really easy for us when we were babies right i mean when we were really toddlers and we hadn't watched videos all sorts of cricket matches or we haven't watched a lot of cricket matches we haven't watched a uh, lot of football matches right so obviously we would also require a training phase for us humans that training phase happens uh, we would want to say involuntarily as it becomes a part of us growing up we keep on watching uh, cricket videos we suddenly one day we start watching football videos and we develop our allegiances you become a hardcore uh, a manchester city fan you become a hardcore uh, man united fan or whatever similarly although we wouldn't want our computer models to develop such biases but we would have to endow our computer models with a similar training phase right so basically the good idea about this is that whenever we are working on computer vision problems the data that we are working on is going to be image data right so it's not just going to be i mean if you think about uh, traditional problems in machine learning right i mean we have all heard about the uh, spam ham email right like i mean if you have an email you have to predict whether it's a spam email or not right so here obviously you're not working with image data you're working with textual data again you're predicting the pollution uh, in a particular uh, metro city uh, given certain factors you're once again not working on image data you're working on you know numeric data once again could be textual data could be a multiple set of features but when you're working with images the, the problem actually actually becomes that very more interesting why because you are able to relate to it with your real life experiences right so um i personally feel and i believe a lot of you would agree with me like just for example those of you who have been inducted into the mathematical olympiad circuit right if you have felt like being introduced to number theory and combinatorial especially these two topics uh, at a very early age has helped you in your math olympiad journey and that is something that uh, i have always talked to um, i mean talked about uh to my students uh, saying that these are two topics permutations and combinations for example in the usual school curriculum we know how late it is introduced usually right but combinatorics particularly or number theory particularly is one of those uh, are one of those topics which which if you if you really um pursue them early you would be able to relate to them quite better because imagine having those i always give this example imagine having balls of three different colors red green blue and somebody asking you in how many ways can you arrange these different balls to create a different sequence of coloring every single time right so i mean that is a problem a student of even class 1 can really i mean or even lower uh, at an age even lower can literally take those three balls and try placing them around and see that something is happening similarly computer vision uh might be something that you i mean of course we are not claiming that you're going to understand all of the linear algebra at 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 a such a tender age that goes on behind it but you still might be able and you will definitely be able to explore the topics appreciate the things that are going on and and just i mean the uh, completely have a slice of the immensely powerful things that we can actually do with computer vision some of the interesting uh, projects that we have already worked on have been car scratch detection for example we have uh, cars and we have uh, been able to find out exactly where the scratches are on that car and that would help um, you in some level of audit with car repairs right like you put your car for a repairing service and uh, you want to check whether all the dents that you signed up for have ultimately been fixed on it and you have an auto check before the car is delivered back to you the sports video classification that i talked to you about right now think about a particular sense where you want to have a video understanding for example automated commentary generation or automated highlight creation how many times have you uh, watched uh, i mean you didn't have time to watch the entire test match right um, the border gavaskar series recently didn't go that well but then yeah i mean we have plenty of this series where the indian team probably had a lot of exploits and you possibly um i mean even even actually being true enough let's say 
the entire course, day three of a test match. We know how the swings um, happen across particular sessions, right? Probably Team India is on top at particular instant. Team Australia is at top probably by end of T. Okay, so those fluctuations, but you are probably interested in a particular point of the game where Rishabh Pant hit a reverse lap for six, right? He hit a, uh, he hit a reverse lap shot for six and that is the one that you want to retrieve and you want to see those or you are possibly interested in one of those uh, elusive Virat Kohli cover drives, right? So you have a good three-hour video in front of you and you want to have the capability to query the video that, okay, give me the particular instance of time where Virat Kohli pay, uh, plays that particular cover drive to uh, Scott Boland, okay? So, you, you being able to do this is a direct corollary of the machine being able to understand that, okay, this was at the instance. So, now think about the levels. Think about the levels that would go into computer vision here. The machine has to be able to understand across frames that a, a batsman is batting and it has to understand the exact sequence of actions, the exact sequence of actions that goes into playing a cover drive, right? What is the elbow position? How does the bat need to be held at that point of time, right? How is a cover drive different from a pull shot? So, and how are you able to do this? You're possibly able to do this because of features, right? So if you think about action features that change over time, we call them temporal features. If you track the particular way these features change across image frames, you'd be able to do that, right? So you wouldn't have to wait for one particular kind person who just says that, okay, check out in the YouTube video, possibly someone comments, check at 9 minutes, 15 seconds. That is when Virat Kohli plays the cover drive that you've been waiting to see. You can literally query and the machine itself is kind enough to give you the answers, right? So that would be, a, uh, that would be once again, my friends, an application of computer vision. For instance, let's say you also want to... Uh, do image completion. You have a really, really uh, good photo, a previous memory, and I, I definitely do not want this to happen to anybody, but let's say it's a dear photograph, and due to some reason, lack of maintenance or rough handling, the photo gets torn. You want to reconstruct it. Not only do you just want to reconstruct it in some shabby, placid way of just filling it up with some random flowers, you want to reconstruct it meaningfully. You want to reconstruct it impactfully. So as to, let's say, I mean, uh, if there were two friends um, hugging each other, uh, you, you know, like uh, after a football match, you would and possibly uh, the part of one particular part from the bottom right of the image gets torn. You don't want something totally meaningless like a cat to be put in there, right? You would want something meaningful. Probably you make you understand that, okay, this was after a football match. So you possibly you add a football uh, at the at the at the right corner of the image which gets torn and you also dehaze a particular image you you deal with so when you're working with images uh, you have to work with problems such as um, lack of illumination you have to work with problems such as occlusion right because a huge huge another huge application is surveillance or tracking you really might want to detect you might want to detect uh, all instances of an image where you have cars, right? In a, in, a, in a car tracking application, possibly at toll tax booths, right? You want to have all of those cars. You don't want to miss a single car. The moment a car comes in, you want to have a very, very good uh, computer vision system that tracks every single car and also tracks the number plate to see that there's no fishy business going out of there and you can they definitely track from which particular state the car comes in from. So, I mean, the possibilities with computer vision my friends are endless and uh, some of your friends some of your uh, I mean some, some of our students here they are working on research projects successfully I obviously I think uh, before we close I would also want to talk about the medical uh, sector of things because you know um, the amount of impact computer vision can have on problems in the medical domain is is like simply immense we have had projects that have worked on uh, brain tumor segmentation from MRI images we have had projects which uh, have worked on pneumonia detection from chest x-ray images. So, I mean, obviously, imagine uh, the amount of uh, speed and the amount of accuracy that you would seek to improve by, by relaxing the amount of human effort uh, that usually goes in behind scanning these sort of radiology images, right? Be it, be it uh, a biopsy report, be it, be it uh, um, an x-ray or an MRI. And so if you have a good enough algorithm, if you if you're able to build a model or if you're able to build a neural network so strong that finds out those possible uh, answers, finds out the correct features and then of course uh, maps 
the correct probability distributions that okay these are the, the corresponding classifications that you want this is a case um, that you really need we know how impactful we know how impactful false positives can be in the in the medical domain so if your algorithm is strong enough you can relax human effort and you can literally impact lives and save lives right so um that is what computer vision um has the potential to do i know you might be interested in the techniques of how to do this like for example we all know about the existence of convolutional neural networks we know how image net data set came into this and transformed the entire gamut of object detection the common objects data set right the cifar 10 images data set if if these things interest you my friends um come reach out to us at chinta we have got exciting programs currently going on who are working on these topics live and uh, be part of something that really uh, helps you understand uh, a technology that is going to be ground breaking in the years to come it already is but uh, we can reach heights using this and uh, obviously you're going to learn something that's absolutely enriching thank you see you in the next video